Good evening, weirdos, and welcome to Total Recall, the show that remembers it for you. I'm your host, Jethro Bot. Also hosting is the wizard to my right or left. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell from this angle. <laughs> I got it right. That's right. It's my left. Okay. On my left. To my left. Mick, guess what uh, the name of the beer is I'm drinking this evening? You won't be able to. It's Cheetah piss. Called... <laughs> Close. It's called uh, It's Complicated Being a Wizard. Ah, nice. Hmm. I thought of you when I saw it at the store. I am once again having the athletic dark. Oh, but, uh, delicious. But we are repping... We are repping a band this week on the koozie. Oh, nice. Rise from Fire. Yeah. Tony and Rain Salvaggio. Mm-hmm. Wow. Those this, are this great is, folks. This is in uh, honor of their album, Hidden. Yeah. You should go check it out if you're listening right now. Don't check it out right now. Watch the show and yeah. then go listen to it. Yeah. Maybe you could bookmark it right now. You know, just take a second to you know. open another tab. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and bring out uh, our first panelist of the evening who um, picked this evening's film. Um, and I'm very excited to uh, bring on all the way from Denver, Colorado, Empress Buttercup. Hello, hello. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. Okay. So, 1980, The Earthling, Ricky uh -oh. Schroeder. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your relationship with this movie from when you were younger well i'm trying to remember how old i was when i saw this movie i do not know but i was young mm -hmm. i would say younger than 14 so maybe you know yeah preteen probably mm -hmm. maybe around t even 10 or 11 um, it was a family movie. I can't remember if we saw it in the theater or if it was one of those cable movies or whatever, but it was a family event. We all saw this movie together, I remember. And I really, it was kind of shocking seeing it again. Let me just tell you that because I bla mm -hmm. obviously blacked out certain parts of this movie. Oh yeah, um, there was stuff you did not remember from when you I, were I remember, yeah, I remember being very moved by this movie. I remember it being very important. I remember mm -hmm. it being very profound, but I obviously didn't remember certain parts of this movie. <laughs> and um, so I was so glad I did it again. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, do you want me to say everything I think about it right now? Or are you going to? Oh, no, no, I just, no, it? no. So I, I could... Yeah. Uh, just wondering, you know, like what, what first comes to mind, just anything like that. But obviously, we'll be talking about it for a little while. So. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot movie, to talk but, about. Yeah. So, um, so when was, you picked it, when you picked yes. it, not having seen it in years, what was the thing that made you say, this is the movie I want to watch again? Um, I just remember it being su a super cool movie. Like, 
uh, and we kind of have watched a lot of really um, fun, silly uh, movies that, you know, are certainly kid friendly, but this seemed like a really serious movie. And mm -hmm. I just remembered it. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I wonder what, if anybody else had seen it, um, you know, that kind of thing. So I just thought it would be a good, a good movie. And also too, I remember my brothers being really, really into this movie. Oh, uh, oh yeah. My brothers were like hardcore about this movie just because of the survival, you know, the, the young boy learning how to fish and stuff like that. Like, oh my gosh, yeah. that was totally like, they loved any oh, the outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Like the boys yeah, life so aspect. Yeah. Yeah, so our whole family was like super into this movie. I remember being at the time. So um, yeah, I just wondered if y'all had seen it and what y'all thought about it. Yeah, and well, I had good. not. Yeah, I, I honestly, I had never heard of this movie. Me neither. I was shocked. I, I am going to bring out uh, some more panelists now. Uh, yeah, from, yeah, yeah. From from Columbus, Ohio, is my younger brother, who I've been watching movies with my whole life. Gravy, gravy, gravy. Me. <laughs> <laughs> gravy, Mock. Hey, how's with it going, the starving folks? starving new avatar. How nice. How very nice. <laughs> Believe me, it's much better to look at a Wampa Beast than it is me. <laughs> that, uh, that is um, one of my favorite Star Wars toys of all time. I love the wall. So great. He's, he's so he's he's a lot of fun to punch things with, you know. He has those <laughs> big hands. Okay. And uh from not so far away, just down the hall is the bride of pumpkin head. Hi. Hello. Pumpkin head. Yay. Pumpkin. 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 Yeah. Bum. Bum, bum, bum. And farther away than any of you are you watching star wars right now no that's my ringtone oh <laughs> okay all the way from san diego it's barbara lawrence from b-sides barbara how's it going hey how's it going mm. it's good get out here pretty good i forgot mm. to ask everyone as i was introducing them had any of you heard of this movie before yes you had heard of it. Okay. No. And I, and I swore up one side and down the other that I had seen it before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then as I watched it, I did a total Gandalf and had no memory of this place. So, um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why, but yeah. Yeah. That's a negative for me, too. I, I, like had no awareness of the movie but when 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 we were watching it there there was something kind of strangely familiar about it like maybe we'd seen part of it yeah. on cable at some point or something well um to answer uh buttercup's question from earlier as to whether she had seen it in the theater or watched it on cable with her family i could tell you that you watched it on cable um <laughs> This movie actually did not have a theatrical release in the United States. I don't know why. They spent nearly $5 million in 1980s money shooting this in Australia. And, you know, who, who on earth knows why they didn't then release it in theaters in America. But wow. uh, like a lot of expensive films that didn't make their money back, HBO grabbed it and ran the heck out of it man. okay that makes yeah. sense we watched yeah. so much hbo when we were yeah. um you know after we moved in into the neighborhood that i basically grew up in the rest of my kid years in san antonio so that yeah. makes sense that's awesome yep. and that also there makes sense is. why we all watched it as a family because we you know we're all it's in the <laughs> in the den yeah, you were already in the living room, so. Right, all <laughs> hanging out. And back um, in the days when, when we all had ATV and you all watched the same things together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, 100%. We yeah. did a lot of that. And 
we were, I guess, you know, one of the families in our, on our street, you know, if we had friends on our street that had cable that had HBO. So I remember other kids coming over and hanging out like, and my dad had built this addition. My stepdad had built this addition to the house that was like a big den. And like, literally all these kids would be just hanging out in the den, watching, watching TV and stuff like at our house. Mm -hmm. But that's really the only amenity we had. There were other people that had like pinball machines and swimming pools. And stuff oh, like man. That. So, <laughs> you know, you just had to move around to somebody's house to do the thing. But anyway, yeah, people came over and watched TV at our house, too. You know, it, awesome. it's, some, it's something that's interesting that you bring up because, uh, you know, as as a dad, like, that's something that we have gotten away from. And it's kind of a funny thing to... um. Uh, to, to lament like oh or back in the day like families would get together and watch tv together mm -hmm. you know but like yeah. we, we don't watch tv together we don't well, we, we didn't have a choice it wasn't it wasn't because it was a good family thing yeah mm -hmm. it right was, yeah. yeah it's it's all we had well it was the newest newfangled thing cable tv right like that was cool oh yeah and especially yeah. hbo home box office buddy all right well as uh as buttercup did mention uh this is a family film family friendly film or maybe uh, by 80 standards <laughs> simply meant to be a family film whether it is or not and like all family films it of course starts the action with a <laughs> fatal <laughs> horrific horrific, horrific. horrific horrific like what was he thinking not since chitty chitty bang bang has such a family friendly <laughs> film open with such a disastrous car accident this was so brutal though seriously it was gut-wrenching and horrifying at the uh, i was ter like just traumatized <laughs> yeah and this it is after finding out william holden is dying of cancer correct correct we have already met william holden's character and he has shown up, he he's, hasn't been living in Australia, but he has shown up to say goodbye to all his Australian friends who he hasn't seen in forever, so he can walk off into the forest and die. Yeah. Don't worry, guys, I'm not done with the bus crash. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is why city slickers need to stay out of the outback. Yeah, although <laughs> it's really not all that well defined exactly what the crash is all about, you know. His mom's in the back making something, and his, his dad is driving the RV, and he just seems to hit a slick patch or something. I I, I, I would it I I would say it was loose sandy gravelly material in which mm -hmm. uh, the rear and wheels he got, were he got were spinning out, and mm -hmm. at that point it is. It actually can function a little bit like ice. You usually sink and just spin is what usually happens when that occurs. But well, I, 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 why, was, why was he even moving the, the thing? It, it None of it made sense. No, the first mistake was that he just got way too fucking close to the edge. You don't yeah, drive you. up that close yeah. to the edge with a big freaking van full of people and bologna sandwiches or whatever they had in the back. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So one one thing I got from it was if if they, they didn't die this way, they were going to die. <laughs> he, he was he was ill. Chances prepared. were high. Chances yeah. were high already. That was not was, a kind environment, as we soon found out yes. after this terrible accident. Right. He, that's he the was first ill reason. prepared to be going deeper into yeah. the outback. Yeah, I was I was about to say he was he was not prepared for the difficult terrain. Did, did anybody else start singing? Traveling in a fight out combi. When you saw that. Oh, like, always. No, no, it was just me. Yeah, always. Oh, yeah. come on. I come yeah. and down oh. and down. Beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. So this old dude's going to die. Yeah. Right. That's good. It's All right. Let's get back. Get back on track. Grim. <laughs> Yeah, once again, like, you know, uh, it, it's it's a, it's great to point out that not only does the action start, like, the action in earnest start with an, an RV crash, but before the crash, you have all this setup with William Holden where he's saying goodbye to, 
you know, the few people in his life he's known, you know, for a long time until he trots off into the forest to just die, you know, because he has cancer. He's not going to make it anyway. So he doesn't want the cancer to win or whatever. He wants the, the jungle to kill him or something. I don't know. The great Australian jungle. Yeah. Yeah. You want to but... die where you start. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And these actors, you know, these it, everyone except Ricky Schroeder and William Holden seems to have been cast from Australia. So, yeah, this He's, guy is Jack Thompson, who's who's like a legend uh -huh. in Australia. Yeah, he looks like yeah. a legend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought this scene between these two guys was pretty heavy. You know, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of inferred uh, history. They didn't have to go into detail about what happened or anything. Like it was just there. You know. Mm -hmm. and uh and it's not pleasant it's it, it's not like i mean at first it's like they're so happy to see each other but it it quickly <laughs> yeah it quickly dissolves and yeah. this i don't know i was looking up some some trivia about it um uh jack thompson this was his first movie after coming back from can and winning best supporting actor for breaker morant that oh, year wow wow yeah wow so he was a big deal. Damn. Yeah. And you'd think that this would make this movie a bigger deal. You know, again, the, the lack of American re release really kind of boggles my mind. Well, it didn't make any money in Australia, so maybe they just gave up. They gave mm -hmm. up, yeah. Yeah, there, there's more interesting trivia about it. We can talk about that at the end, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Ooh, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. um, I, Bill Holden did not come across as as being Australian at all, though. No, right. No. I think I think that's yeah. fair to say. Yeah, yeah. he that, came across as a as American cowboy. Yeah, he came across as as William Holden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you'd have to assume that an Australian accent would start to resurface, right? Isn't that normally how that works? Even if you, I mean, he was an adult when he left. So, yeah. I, think if I was in Australia okay, for three days. Different. I would start getting an Australian accent just because. Listen, I only have to be yeah. visiting my cousins in Oklahoma for 30 minutes before the y'all start breaking out. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Another another similarity this film has with uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent so point. The, par the parallels. Uncanny. Seeing it coming together. Seeing it. And, <laughs> and you know, that that big van did fly. <laughs> for a minute. Not, not for long. Savage. Can you fly, Savage. Bobby? Savage. <laughs> Very short distance. Look at it flying. <laughs> the view is great up here. <laughs> You know, like not all movie oh, magic man. is magic. Like you see the thing slipping a little bit, but it's vague what happens. And then the next time you see it, just straight up driving right off the cliff. You know, yeah, like that, that's a, that's the result of a running start, not yeah, like a, a a mild tip over. <laughs> but you know, hey, whatever. It looked great. It was yeah, a great it, crash. Yeah, they I wrecked that bus, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> So, of course, if you couldn't see it from a mile away, somebody crashes Mr. Deathwalk's final journey. Oh, it's Ricky Schroeder. His parents are dead. Isn't he cute? <laughs> Ricky Schroeder's hardcore, man. He is the most like, Dude, like, like rock and roll, like child actor of the 80s. I mean, like. The acting Rough and of this kid was so impressive. Come on. Yes. Yeah, I would say yes, it really was. I think he held his own. Yeah. He reverted to feral very, very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I will say. He was trying As a matter of fact, what choice did he totally, have? He totally fucking had a psychotic break. It is horrifying. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Like he, he reverted to, like, you know, kind of meh, 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 meh. For a second, which yeah, it's actually uh 
it's actually pretty understandable and and, yeah. not, and not terribly is, far-fetched at all. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. not, that's a, like actually no. a pretty reasonable response for a young child. So, mm -hmm. I mean, was, there's no worse yeah. way to lose your parents than at a young age, right before your very eyes. Um, because Tra of odd because, vacation. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving you trapped in the Australian outback. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's if it's one thing I wish I had more of, it was like pictures of all the animals that are in Australia. You know? Yay! Yeah. Best part. Animals everywhere. Because we yeah. saw yeah. almost oh. all the animals that were in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> However, That's I will good. say that there are far too many nope ropes and danger noodles for my liking i yeah. did not care for that at all. Lots, lots of danger needles <laughs> but, but that's australia yeah everything wow. is trying to kill you everything yeah. that's yeah. australia it's true yeah it, it, there's it's a very intimidating um uh, wildlife um menagerie for sure it you know it's i i one of my favorite things about um the western genre is that the landscape is always like a character in the film i love mm -hmm. any yes. movie where the landscape is is a character in the film and uh the environment it's not so much the landscape the landscape for sure yes but like it gets more detailed it's like the the direct immediate environment is like mm -hmm. this um is definitely an intense character uh presence in this movie it's very cool mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that is true. A little... There's a lot of really beautiful, like, mountainous pans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where you see, oh, the like, cinematography how... is beautiful. Yeah. 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 Point, yeah. It was a it was a, a, a talented uh, cinematographer, uh, but I I have to say I felt a lot of the animal action was like felt really forced. You know, like they were like, and now we're just pushing out this bird you haven't seen yet. And now this <laughs> well, one. I mean, and here's. Did you know how many snakes are in Australia? Well, there's this there's one. There's a lot. And this one, you know, like. <laughs> oh, and wait a minute. Here's a wombat. <laughs> yeah. Wombat. You haven't seen wombats yet, so here he is. You know. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of of stock footage. Looked <laughs> like. That was incorporated I, into the movie. I mean, it was it was pretty seamless. It looked beautiful, but yeah, uh, you, you got the impression that there was a lot of stock footage. But you know, I, I, I distinctly good. remember the first time I saw Mad Max, thinking, mm -hmm. "Not yeah. one koala." Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They did. You know, they didn't make it, win. wizard. They they didn't make it. They I don't need make a koala. <laughs> No, when the um, when, I, when when the when the big forest fires were sweeping through Australia, man, they were talking about all the the poor koalas losing their lives because they just can't move fast enough to right. escape the yeah. fire. Yeah, right. Like, it's very I, I'm building a greenhouse in the backyard. I'm going I'm going to grow eucalyptus and adopt a koala. Well, have fun with the chlamydia. Someone. <laughs> <laughs> It's always a good time. Oh my god. Look at him. He's even making a, a sweet face. Yeah. That's so our, you're that's saying this little... is how Ricky Schroeder got chlamydia? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first <laughs> compensation. The first time he got chlamydia, this is how it happened. <laughs> It wasn't the last time, but this, you know, was the first time. How old was he when he made this movie? Did you get that? Anybody get that? He looks so little. He does. He, he looks was very far young. younger than the 12 years old that he was when he made it. Uh -huh. Oh, he was 12 when he made this? But yeah. he looks like he's like six or seven, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks, he looks oh. like he looks at, at max like he's eight. Yeah. Okay, so then the acting actually makes more sense because I was like, how can he be that good of an actor if he was so little? But he wasn't that little. 12? Yeah, but it's still only a second movie. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, he could, well, he had so, which is, a is very impressive. He had the champ, right? He had the champ. Right, he first. had the champ first. Oh, the champ was oh, before this? Champ. Yeah. 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 Champ. Oh, champ. Champ. Yeah. champ. I love champ. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Well. Just, I just heard the replay on that coming from the other room at my house. Champ. Champ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what happens there. Champ dies, right? <laughs> Something. Doesn't Champ die? Yeah. He's crying on his... his, his yeah, I, I think Rick Schroeder is great in both of these, those that movie and this movie. I think he's, yeah. he's really, really good. Well, they're both yeah. ham fisted, that's for sure. You know, they're <laughs> <laughs> they're both uh, pretty. I think I don't they know. both gave it their all. I think he did very yeah. well in this. He did. He did. He, he did, really, did really, really, really well. I, I was very impressed. Yeah. One thing that I have thought about, though, um, and uh, William Holden uh, was an alcoholic at the time that he made this movie, and uh, he was—he was an alcoholic at the time he made this movie. And I didn't actually know that when we watched it. I didn't—I I really did not know that much about William Holden. He didn't drink himself to death. He smashed his own head in accidentally while what? plastered. Yeah, that's Whoa. how he died. Damn, he wow. fell down and hit a coffee table. A right? coffee table death. Yes, oh. so that is how that is how Holden died. But to be honest, he more than certainly would have drank himself to death, as that was unfortunately the path that William Holden was on um rick schroeder liked william holden he so did. much he named one of his sons holden schroeder yeah he did oh, oh, wow. hey. oh my goodness yeah yeah that was part of the one of the little things of trivia that i was gonna talk about later yeah he did yeah. he he was really um really inspired by him he really got along mm -hmm. with him well he really he, he took a, a shine to him and yeah. i think william holden did the same he was he was very protective of him during the shooting of the movie oh wow yeah so what what is everyone's favorite william holden movie i gotta ask who i wasn't prepared um let's see I would I would probably say Sunset Boulevard. I love Sunset Boulevard. That is yeah. a great movie, man. That is really one of my all-time favorite it, noir. It's one of mine too. <laughs> so, I gotta yeah, go I with would... Starlog 17. Well. Yeah? Yeah. I, I have not seen movie. I have not seen that movie, but um, it is very you know it is very appreciated. It's my kind of movie. Yeah, I think uh, I, it sounds like I definitely need to watch Sunset Boulevard. I love oh, noir, yeah. and I've never seen it. Oh, oh my god, it's so good! Oh, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably my probably my favorite. I mean, he's yeah. he's known for you know. A lot of things westerns and stuff like that yeah but um i think that's probably my favorite I mean, the yeah a lot of is good a lot of western and crime a lot of western and crime yeah good stuff. yeah oh what was the name of that one is that william holden i'd have to ask adam there's one that's kind of a crazy nor movie where he is it William Holden that ends up in Mexico? I can't imagine. I can't remember now. Uh. Well, you're getting called out, Gravy. Oh. <laughs> apparently, you <sighs> don't like. Apparently, you don't like noir enough. <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> oh come on! We don't shame people for what they haven't seen. Well, if you yes, it's true. That's true. There's no, there's no shame in, uh, you know, haven't experienced it yet. Um, something that to look for. That just means he gets to. Yeah, he gets to. Um, so, of course, eventually, William Holden, who really knows his way around the Outback. I mean, obviously, this guy is like, I'm going to go die in the Outback. He loves the Outback. He's good at the Outback. He can handle it. 
you know. Well, he was raised in the outback by he what was sounds raised like his dad was a. I don't want to say survivalist because it has a a negative connotation, but his dad was definitely a naturalist. Off the land, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like a like a like a, a homesteader uh, naturalist. Yeah, type. yeah. That makes a lot more sense in the Australian outback too than it would in modern times America mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah, nobody's like, I want to go die in the Central Park. They do some time to time, I'm guessing, but <laughs> they not on purpose. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yes, eventually William Holden and this poor young boy hook up and he starts to come out of his horrible comatose and he starts teaching him how to survive in the hopes that when he dies of this cancer eating away at him, which seems to be coming very soon, the boy will still be able to get to civilization on his own and therefore not die from all the snakes and the wildebeest and uh, man we saw so many animals in this movie <laughs> my okay so <laughs> animals everywhere Did we everywhere the that he made it out so okay my <laughs> my one thought was when right after it the 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 rv goes over the cliff mm-hmm. he Ricky Schroeder scrambles down the side of that hill awfully fast yeah. to yeah. get to the bo- to the wreckage. Um, and he's yelling so loud that mm-hmm. William Holden can hear him. Yeah. Yeah. William. But, yeah. William was close at the time. Yeah. He, so he, he saw the close. RV. Yeah. He, right. he was close. Yeah. My, my thought process is, you know, death be damned. There is a child out here. Why aren't you just getting him back up to this to safety the mm-hmm. quickest way you know how? Because clearly there was a road that that RV <laughs> traveled down. Yes, yes. Fair question. Uh, because he, he William Holden says, deal with it. "Yeah, he's a selfish bastard." Yeah, because he didn't give a fuck. That's why. Yeah. Apparently, I guess he did not give a fuck. Yeah, that's what I'm his my way to die. Uh, okay. You are interfering with my plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is obvious. This, I guess the plot had a, to happen, right? But I mean, well, and William, <laughs> I mean, William Holden's character here that had been his whole life, it seemed, was fuck you, I'm gonna go yeah, do what I want to no. do. Like, yeah. you know, William Holden's dad threw mm-hmm. his ass over a cliff and said, uh, learn to swim. He was one of those mm-hmm. dads. Yeah, so I'm gonna drop you little... here if you right. want to eat again and you figure out how to get back home. And I uh, can't swim, and you never will with that attitude, right? That exactly. Attitude. So that's how he wound up like that. Like, that, yeah, he did exactly the same thing to Ricky. Poor little Ricky. I definitely got that impression when, when he later on in the movie, when he's warming up to Ricky Schroeder and he talks about his dad, you really get the idea that, like, um. He like this. His childhood was rough. It wasn't all like, "Here, son, I'll teach you how to fish." It's more like, well, "Yeah, you're living God. out in the middle of nowhere in hungry, the Australian, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, in the yeah. Australian outback in the fifties, forties and fifties." So yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No telephone. No, no like not, not a single luxury. No electricity. Yeah. <laughs> Pooping in a hole. <laughs> with danger noodles. <laughs> yeah. Pooping in a hole with danger noodles. Yeah. And obviously, like, he was determined to leave that valley and never come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, until he's dying. Yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't really realize that um, he was going back home, you know, that he was actually trying to find his. You know his childhood house, which it's a pretty messed up childhood house. Let's face it. Right. Yeah. It's a shack. It's hardly. It's, yeah. He, he expected to die there, and I'm sure he didn't even expect to be buried. 
mm-hmm. at yeah. he expected to just die on that property somewhere. Yeah, and, be and I don't know if you're ready to talk about it. Up. Yeah. yeah, I mean, probably that kangaroo. <laughs> this ca- this kangaroo right Although here. Technically, I think that's. I think a that's a wallaby. That's a wallaby. What is that? Like a small kangaroo? They're vicious. A wallaby. Kinda, yeah. Kangaroos it could be a rabbit, too. but let's not split hairs. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, Jeff. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's not a rabbit. Yeah. Pretty. I, I know. It's a cute little thing, though. Yeah. Little yeah. Thing. There are evidently wild wallabies in England. Really? <gasps> yes. Oh. Not natively, of course, but. Oh, I think we have one on B sides every week, actually. <laughs> Just kidding. He's an otter. I want to go see a wallaby in, in England. England. <laughs> go to England. Yeah. <laughs> I bet if you go to Australia, you could just hang out with them. Like, there's got to be like a very specific island covered in them. I don't know. You just wander into the outback. Yeah. And die. <laughs> <laughs> I know they have a huge problem on the golf course with with red kangaroos. Yeah. Should yeah. not be playing golf in Australia. Do you know how many have died this year alone? <laughs> Should you really be playing golf anywhere, though? Yeah. Fair point. I'd rather they be doing that than shooting rhinoceros and shit, though. That's for sure. Like, you know, you want to impress me as an obscenely rich douchebag? Fucking golf in the outback, you know? Play a... <laughs> or, or better yet, um, you know, croquet. Do some outback croquet. See how far you get. That's a man's that's, game. That's a man's game. Ooh. I think it's pretty well established Adam doesn't like Ricky Schroeder. <laughs> <laughs> what else did Ricky Schroeder? Silver Spoons, right? Why does it is was he also yes. on a TV show called Silver Spoons? He was on a TV show called Silver Spoons. And it, the you mentioned the movie The Champ. And did he have another big movie or like what else, you know, like he was in Lonesome Dove. Lonesome Dove. So he was a that was a TV movie though. Yeah, but he was an adult at that point, right? He was in uh not now he didn't make a whole lot of movies comparatively. Mm -hmm. And none of them that were very good. Yeah. Well, he's definitely given it his all in this movie. Like, he's working hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this was a tough one. And you could yeah. see it was pretty tough on both these guys. So asking well, a yeah. lot. You know, getting back to the question of uh, William Holden, I, you know, like, I, uh, I wonder if he was like, you know, for the purpose of this movie and his relationship with the kid, he sobered up a little bit, you know. He was like, you know what? Maybe he just, I, yeah, managed I it. I won't be, yeah, managed it well. Yeah, like I mean, obviously he's functioning, so he probably had to stay hydrated out in the fucking outback. That shit looked mm-hmm. brutal. Yeah. yeah, couldn't be fucking wasted out of his gourd every night and then wake up hungover because he was old. You know, that... he had to be hungover. Oh yeah, I bet that's why they had so much Ricky Schroeder on his own. It's because they went out there to shoot more William Holden. And then they get there and he's like, well, I can't do this for multiple of reasons. So leave me alone for now. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, well, let's, yeah, we'll shoot yeah. some Ricky Schroeder, I guess. <laughs> hey, Ricky, just go ahead and jump in the fucking lake again. Let's get some more of that. <laughs> yeah, actually, that, that's how they... um. That's how they got the uh, the shot with the the camper going off the cliff. That was William Holden driving. It. That was oh William Holden. Oh yeah, that was that was William Holden's first uh, ca- camper. You know, <laughs> that was. Come on, I got this fucking thing of gear. Yeah. <laughs> arr, arr. 
Oh, William. I think we're getting off track again. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> good guy. Are you holding yeah. Ricky? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at those bangs. <laughs> He's got some bang action going. Yeah. Yeah. This is him all cleaned up. Yeah. Have you ever had scotch? <laughs> you like gladiator <laughs> movies? <Yeah. laughs> hey, remember that one time? Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a bad day, wasn't it? <laughs> remember that time your parents went over the cliff? That yeah. was rough. Yeah. Okay, I I have one question that I have to get off my my chest. <laughs> Why was this movie called The Earthling? Oh my God! I, I thank you, I, thank you, thank Lizard, you for thank asking you. that. Yeah, let us <laughs> I not don't know. Forget, let us not forget to touch down on the fact that there is no reason for this movie to be called The Earthling. Um, <laughs> no. I was waiting for aliens the entire time. Yeah, oh, it's or like just, William just any, never anything materialized. To... Mm-hmm. To justify the name, like at some point, I thought maybe William Holden would go. That's how Earthlings behave. <laughs> 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 Give me a titular exactly. line. Yeah, or something. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even the, the word would be like completely absent of from any vernacular that anybody in this movie would have used. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it said Earthling. Yeah. <laughs> but here, I actually kind of like it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take. I'm going to take a swing at this. Okay. Um, so <clears throat> perhaps it is this whole idea of like a perspective where like you have like this isolated human being, an earthling, if you will, like just existing in this uh, intense natural like environment, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, you know, because that's not, the, a human environment that isn't a human developed environment that is a purely natural environment in which you are just going to have to survive it like you can't you're not going to shape that to your needs it doesn't give a shit about your needs mm-hmm. so uh, that's i i can kind of see it i do think it's weird it's awkward they probably could have done a lot better um yeah. but yeah. uh but that's the way i look at it it's like it's like earthling like almost like animal in an environment kind of thing like earthling as just kind of a an animal uh yeah. isolated in this environment i would have it's... preferred the title animal in an environment <laughs> <laughs> or here's a title we could have gone with you know like... <laughs> danger noodles Thunderdome, two men enter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, William Holden in Barter Town. What the fuck is this shit? <laughs> two men enter, one man naps. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I actually meant to look up on Webster's and see what the definition of the word earthling was, just in case maybe someone was like being a wise ass and there was a, you know, a, a, you know, maybe there's some other definition for it that would pertain more. But um, it was a pisser that they called that. And I was like, oh, man, 1980 Ricky Schroeder aliens. All right. And then all you get is like 1980 Ricky Schroeder. There's no fucking aliens. <laughs> so according it's like, to Merriam Webster, it is literally an inhabitant of the earth. Period. And an then inhabitant the sec- of second the second definition okay. is worldling. So worldling? Now, worldling. Hmm. Well, now I have to look up worldling because I. I don't actually know what the fuck that is. I thought well, I knew what Earthling was. Is gross. Earthling some sort of weird Australian slang? I mean, <laughs> person engrossed in the concerns of this present world. Oh. Okay. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm glad I decided against drinking Fosters this evening. You know, <laughs> there there really isn't any good Australian beer that I can think of. You know, no offense, Australia, but if you make good beer, that doesn't make its way down here. Well, they wouldn't send it over here. They would keep it for themselves. Blimey, now. We wouldn't give you a good beer. See, I can't do any accents. I don't even know how to try. Why would you do that live on the internet? Like, you know, like, oh, now's the time to try an accent. Dumbass. <laughs> Australian wine's not for drinking. It's for lying down and avoiding... <laughs> that's excellent that's, that's yeah, a that's pretty good accent great. too actually yeah nice oh, that's you. pretty good pretty you know good. i i always had a hard time finishing a, a foster's uh oil can that's a lot more yeah. beer than it looks like and it's not very good so it's not good beer no. yeah well, by, the time, beer. by the time you get about half of that thing drank you're just pretty yeah. pretty tired of drinking it and it's getting it's, warm yeah, yeah, exactly. It's worse, 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 worse. <laughs> yeah, I, Foster's is terrible. I'm sorry. It's awful. It really is. I it mean, really is. not to disparage it too harshly, but God, I'd rather drink a Bud than fucking mm -hmm. Foster's. And Bud's awful. I hate Bud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> We insulate all houses with it. <laughs> just as a just as a sidebar, there, uh, you know, Mick and I know each other originally from compressed, from. All oh, right, oh. feisty from, from dogs barking. What? That, that, that's yeah. what happens when you talk about fosters around my dogs. We used to <laughs> we used to fight dogs. We met at Fantastic Fest, the film festival here in Austin. And uh, one year, they were um, sponsored by Fosters, and they actually had like an Australian film theme that year. And I that has got to be the first time in a while I drank Fosters, and the last time in my life I drank <laughs> Fosters. Yes, uh, that was the the Ozploitation year. Yeah, the Ozploitation year, where we had a Jack Thompson film. Wake and Fright. Jack Thompson is in the most excellent Wake and Fright. I wouldn't be surprised if he was also in The Man from Hong Kong. Stars uh, John Reed, or uh, what's his name? Uh, from Fury Road and the original Mad Max. Crap. Drawing a blank. But he's, all, he's in The Man from Hong Kong. All right. Now, we're done sidebarring. Um, I do want to talk a little trivia. Barbara mentioned that she had some some good bits to think about this movie. We already know that it lost money and that HBO showed the hell out of it. Yeah. But what? But what else? I, oh, and also, I noticed that the guy who directed this movie was a prolific director, putting out a film every year or every other year. He was developing his next project. Uh, you know, while this movie was shot in 1980 in September and October, this guy was already developing his next project when he passed away in December. This is this guy's last movie. But boy, he sure was popping them out, you know, like he was working hard. And The Italian Job is really the only movie that I had heard of on his list, including The Earthling. Like he's a yeah. British filmmaker, and I think he made a lot of like perhaps uh, popular English films, but stuff that didn't necessarily make it over the pond. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I, the director apparently was pretty hard on Ricky Schroeder during the filming, so much to the point that that William Holden intervened on his behalf. Wow! And, and that you know Ricky Schroeder and William Holden became very close and ended up naming his son after him. But yeah, mm -hmm. the, the weird, the weird thing that I saw about this movie was that the producer had announced that it was going to be a series of seven Australian American films that were going to be filmed in Australia. And, um, 
and then this was the only one that ever got actually made. He he had plans to raise like mm -hmm. a bunch of money from investors uh, in Australia and overseas and in America, and um, and yet this was the only one that ever got made. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't know if that was like a grifter thing on his part. <laughs> Who knows? Because yeah. he, well, he died. No, this was the producer. The producer. Oh, the producer. Yeah. But you're not yeah. talking about Zarkov, right? You're talking about No. Yeah. The the film's executive producer, Stephen mm -hmm. Sharma. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he was the one who was uh, he was like, yeah, this is going to be... I think you did hate I... Stan in the beginning. I want to <laughs> talk about so do I. comment that he doesn't understand the intended audience and barely understand the themes. I mm -hmm. kind of agree with you now because that is mm -hmm. very... It's very stressful to think about this movie now. But I also wonder if it's because it's Australian and it's like Australian or something. Maybe this made yeah. more sense there. Yeah, well, I think that's... I think that was the, the whole point of that whole... I raising to money to become, to become a series of films in Australia because, but yeah, it, it, if it's meant Even to be a family Gen movie, it's really not family friendly. It's, it's, fucking it's brutal. But I think yeah. even for Gen X, which is like a tough love generation, I think it's even brutal for that because like, I obviously blacked out certain dramatic parts of the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know? clearly I did too because. Yeah. And, and I really do think I was like 10 or 11 now that you're talking about when it was made and everything. So I was yeah, pretty yeah. young myself as well, yeah, which is probably yeah. why it was traumatic. Yeah, I yeah. think I was, uh, yeah, I was probably, probably about 12 when it came out. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's, it, yeah, it, it for, for something that's supposed to be maybe a family movie, you know, it's, it feels really dark. Mm -hmm. And it uh, it feels really dangerous. And yeah, we are Gen X kids. That this was that generation that we would have been watching it, and we did. We grew up feral. And my brother you know, did love the whole survival part. Like they, yeah, loved, like they wanted to reenact that whole movie, you know, out in the woods. But we were already cool. doing that, right? Yeah, I, I mean, we were yeah. already exactly. wandering yeah. around the woods. And, oh yeah. My and, brothers had not carried knives yeah. on them. They were constantly yeah. catching animals and trying yeah, to, I, you know. I thought all that stuff was cool when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, we were already wandering around the woods with a pack of matches and, and you know, comic books and picking blackberries for survival. I mean, that was just who we were, right? Yeah, yeah. We were raised I don't on think those water neglect. I don't think it rushed and glossed over the parents' death. I thought it was a very awful that whole. It it, it gave with, it some yeah. It definitely gave it some gravity in my opinion. It gave it some gravity, I, but it 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 mm -hmm. did feel a little rushed to me. Well, yeah. I, I would I'm gonna put I'm gonna counter that that notion that um as I I dig like survival stuff um uh -huh. when I was a kid growing up um. Like one of my favorite books I ever read was Hatchet. And when I was a kid growing up, I read a lot of Gary Paulson books as a result. Um, I've always, you know, I was a big Dune fan, survival, all that stuff. It's really interesting. I'm no by no means a personally a survival expert or anything, but even now, like I really like watching um the uh alone series where um which in my opinion is like the most real deal hardcore survival show you could watch um and uh it, it, it the thing about surviving in the wild is that it's like that ex that saying like time waits for no one like mm -hmm. the clock is ticking from now Here's and my question. Here's and, my and, question. and you don't you don't have time and, and yeah. that's what william holden is like Yes. Making clear to this kid, like, yeah, like, you don't have time to sit here and mourn your parents. You don't have some time to sit here and and lament your situation. You've got to move, you gotta and you've eat. got to eat, and you've got to find water. And yeah. if you don't, you will be dead in days. So and here's my question: How long does anybody have any idea how long this? Like, as alluding to what Barbara's car was that she 
feels like it was a slightly rushed. Like, did it ha did this happen in a, in a week? In two weeks? Like, how long do you think? I've seen. Yes. I've I, I've watched episodes. I've watched um uh alone uh, several seasons of Alone, and I have seen people tap out within the first handful of days. Oh no, I meant like the fictional movie. How long? Okay. Do you well, think okay, so. It's like to, less than a week, really. To, really? Oh, I oh, yeah. it was See, yeah. to me, and to me, it looked I like it to me, would, it did several not feel days, like I a think. week. It felt more like a day, maybe a day and a half. Oh no, I didn't feel that way. I felt like no it was like between a week and two weeks, kind of. No, yeah, it was it was days. Yeah, it felt several like days. It days. But they were yeah. sleeping at night. They had to stop at night and sleep yeah. and get up in the yeah. morning and keep going. Yeah, and and that's where like you know I. I, I thought about it like, yes, it's very easy to question and it's natural and rightfully so. Like mm -hmm. the right thing William Holden was would could have could have done was to get that boy is back to civilization as close as he could have in the time and energy that he had at his disposal. That old man but, cut it fucking close though. He was really fucking at the very Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, you that know, he's he knew it. He they had it. they had a very brief scene where he's sitting there talking to himself. He's trying to figure out what to do, mm -hmm. you know. And he's even like being the self absorbed asswipe he is. He's even like telling himself, like convincing himself, the kid's half crazy and half gone anyway. Yeah. Uh, but he is. Yeah. He's legitimately debating, like, what am I going to do about this? And like the best resolve that he comes up with is, I'm going to, if he can come around. And he follows me. I might just have enough time to show him what he needs to not die by the time I get back home and die myself. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a crazy and, plot and it, for a movie. That's crazy. It is, it, is, it is an unusual plot, no doubt. <laughs> and Very this strange. was a screen. This is a screenplay, right? Or was this a book? This is just a screenplay, wasn't it? I think it was just a screenplay. Yeah, just a screenplay. Yeah. Crazy. Well, um, I do want to get on to the voting, but there's one thing we didn't mention, and this is actually one of the aspects of this film that I thought about the most this week since watching the movie. The, as, as we mentioned while we were watching it, the Aborigine actor that they have come in and do a few scenes does not get any dialogue at no. all, which is bullshit because if you have ever heard an app, a native, you know, uh, Australian or New Zealander that speaks English, you know, that learned English essentially from Australia, uh, New Zealand, um, they have the most enchanting accents you have ever heard. <laughs> in your life. I could I could listen to someone read the ingredients of children's breakfast cereal in yeah. that voice, and I would not get bored, and I would <laughs> I would, would not want it to end. And that was that was a uh, that was kind of a, a weird thing with me too. I was like, yeah. Why well, didn't they? Yeah, it gets worse. Why did he speak? Yeah, I feel like that actor. I've seen him in films before, and I feel kind of bad that I can't name him. But one of the reasons why I can't name him is because he is not credited in this no. movie at all. Oh man, they want to act like they just pulled this guy off. Of the mm -hmm. jungle and of uh, you know the, uh, uh, I don't like that. And I think if if it's a guy I'm thinking of, and I'm sorry his name escapes me, but this is total recall. Um he is in a lot of movies and he is very accomplished, like he is an excellent actor. There were several very good Aborigine actors working at this time. Anyway, I just wanted to mention that. Before we get on to voting, uh, I do want to start voting with our uh, our decider, our chooser. And um, 
before we get to voting, uh, Buttercup, was there anything else you wanted to tell us about this movie? Um, no, I think I learned a lot about this movie. You know, mm -hmm. I had very little knowledge. I remembered not that much about it. Um, you know, I was just going based on my recollections of this movie mm -hmm. and, and that it was a childhood one. So memory was pretty distant. Like, yeah, like, really distant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how how we doing with it? How are how are you feeling about the earth? Uh, <laughs> I I'm super glad we, we saw it. I'm super glad I saw it again. Like I definitely feel like I needed to see that movie again to understand it better. You know, like mm -hmm. It filled in a lot of. I I was missing a lot of information about this movie. Like, also too, I learned a lot. Like I said earlier, I learned a lot from reading all the trivia and all the stuff about when it was made and blah blah blah. But I'm really bummed about the William Holden thing. Like, I didn't really know. I haven't watched a ton of his movies, mm -hmm. um, but I have watched a few. And obviously, he is kind of you know he made some cool movies so yeah that might have been why my stepdad recommended him because he probably was a big fan of his earlier movies yeah um, you know so that makes sense um was he a, <laughs> was he a big fan of like westerns crime? oh yeah okay. big time yeah super very much so gotcha yeah and um, so, yeah, like I, I'm glad I watched it, but I, I, you know, just all the stuff we talked about, I think it's traumatic. It's a little bit intense. I don't think it makes sense for, especially, I don't think it makes sense now for kids today. I think kids would be horrified by this movie now. Like that's, <laughs> you know, like, so I just don't think I could recommend it for today, but mm -hmm. I personally am glad I watched it again because yeah. Uh, it still was a really interesting movie, and obviously people are entertained by it now. Yeah. So, so, so somebody remembers this from their childhood. You're going to recommend they check it out again, just like no. That. I'm a I'm a may I'm a I'm a I'm a maybe I'm a, I say with oh, caution, maybe. with caution, with caution. Okay. due to themes, due to trigger mm -hmm. triggering themes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we all we know all about the themes. <laughs> so yeah, no, I I don't know if I would rec like yeah I I don't know if I could recommend it to everyone, mm -hmm. but okay. So a little on the fence there, but you're glad. Yeah, you're glad. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad. I didn't realize too it was available on what was the you know how it was a bit how we watched it so that's kind of cool i could have watched it earlier yeah cool cool well let's just move on down the line here we got a little order um gravy you had yeah. said that you weren't sure if you had seen this movie or not in your distant childhood and you know like we mentioned it being an hbo mainstay and you and i grew up on on hbo yeah. So maybe you saw a trailer. Maybe you saw the movie. How do you feel about this movie? Well, I I really like the movie. You really like the movie. Okay. I really like the movie. Um, I mean, it, it's got its flaws, and I also mm -hmm. like do agree. I I know where you're coming from with some of the animal uh, scene. You know, scenes like obviously some of that stuff is like staged for effect or whatever. Mm -hmm. but and um, it works and it works yeah um which honestly i really like it i i think um it's unique you know it's like how many films can you think of that you've seen in this setting like you know it provides an, uh, a unique perspective and um i think the acting is really good i think the ending is actually really strong i think the message at the end kind of um legitimizes it as a, a family film because i think it has a very positive message at the end um and and his last conversation well one of the last conversations that he has yeah with rick schroeder you know he's like you know telling him don't you know don't hide your love from people don't you know 
yeah. share it, be open, like don't uh, isolate yourself from people, you know, because that's, that's a call what, back to this stuff, right? Don't make the mistakes yeah. I made. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you see this guy, like he, you know, he just refused to see the value of what was right in front of him, you mm -hmm. know? And that's, you know, so I thought, I thought the movie had a good message and, you know, I'm a sucker for survivalist stuff. And, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thumbs up for me. You're giving it thumbs up and, and same, same advice for someone who remembers this from their distant childhood. Thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Check it out. Like, you know, if, if you were like, man, yeah, I saw that movie and I remember I liked it. I, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't watch it now and be, you know, interested. Cool. Well, that's good. All right. We got a maybe. We got a thumbs up. Can't wait to find out what Bride of Pumpkinhead has to tell us. Pumpkinhead. Um, any observations? Anything you want to share about the, the movie? Like, any, like, yeah, like, looking forward to it. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so I had never seen this movie, I'd never heard of this movie. Um, I fell asleep during this movie. It really. <laughs> lost me um, <laughs> yes <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to i don't want to distract too much but i am curious do you know who ricky schroeder is do you know anything about ricky schroeder at all like no <laughs> okay awesome okay. yeah no. i had a feeling you've never seen silver spoons never seen the champ you're, you're telling all of my secrets, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I've never seen those movies either. Um, oh, it's okay. No shame there. Those are not on anyone's bucket list, <laughs> I assure you. If you've never seen Silver Spoons, you really haven't missed a whole lot. No. <laughs> okay, so we can skip that one. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. You can skip the champ, I bet. I haven't seen it since I was a kid, but... I'm going to go ahead and guess you can skip it. That's a tearjerker, though. How do you feel about boxing? Uh, it's fine. Yeah, then you don't want to watch the champ. It's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think with this movie, I would say if you saw it when you were a kid, like, see it again. I think that the experience of watching it young versus watching it older will be, like, very interesting if you haven't seen it as an adult i it's not going to be at the top of my recommend list mm -hmm. so yeah. how so we're are you saying a no on this one then You're yeah like, i guess i'm saying a no like no? i don't want to disparage any of the great things about it it just didn't do it for me and yeah. I would have rather just sat down with like a National Geographic on Australian animals and looked at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I get that. Yeah. I'm hip. Okay, we've got a maybe. We've got a yes. We've got a no. I'm getting. I'm getting pumped. All right. How do we feel, Barbara? How, what are we looking at? Let, let's. Uh, and also, if there was any uh, trivia that that we got to get to that I skimmed over, I, I, there, yeah, I, we, I think we pretty much voting. covered all the the trivia stuff yeah. that we were gonna we were gonna talk about anyway. So yeah, yeah. Um, I am weirdly gonna say yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's 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 a lot of deciding factors in it too. But I mean, uh, because I one I I don't like danger noodles and nope ropes and and they got, <laughs> nope he got ropes. far far too close to them in in any sense in this movie but mm -hmm. um there's 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 something kind of weirdly uh prophetic about it um even though uh do i think he could have taken him back to to civilization in a a much shorter time yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do I think he needed to that teach him one of those life situation. lessons along the way just in order to die in the place that he was born? Mm -hmm. uh, 
selfish. But oddly enough, I think it's it's a weirdly uh, it's a weirdly great movie mm -hmm. um, that will teach a lot of weird, important life lessons that I don't think a lot of people get today. Like there's that there's that one line that he talks about when he when he's telling him, you know, yeah, you're hearing the words that I'm speaking to you, but you're not hearing anything around you. You're not hearing the birds. You're not hearing the the frogs. You're not hearing the breeze. You're not seeing the sun pinging off the light. You're not you're not getting any of that. And if you want to be able to survive, not just here, but in anywhere, you need to be able to recognize those things to be aware of your surroundings. And I think that's a really important lesson. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I, weirdly enough, I do think I would recommend this. Maybe not awesome. to, you know, parents of young children, but yeah, yeah. I think I probably would. Yeah. Well, um, so if, if, if it were so, from someone's childhood, like they were thinking about this movie, they knew they liked it when they were younger. Or if they've never seen it from when they yeah. were from when they were here, I would totally recommend yeah. this. Yeah, totally recommend it. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, well, obviously that makes it my turn now, and uh, I am a little torn, and I'll tell you why. Um, on the one side, you do have some wonderful lines, like you've pinpointed there. There are some some good moments, you know. Mm -hmm um rewarding things and i get that and it makes me want to like this movie more than i do but it is dull and it is ham-fisted and these animals are forced and i had a hard time like ignoring that and the fucking rv crash is so boss Oh God, I'm that's like, awful! <laughs> I'm like, you have like so many things to like about this movie. I mean, William Holden, and yet at the same time, like you know, Ricky Schroeder is just—it's oh man, it's just so on the fence. But my my gut was saying no while I was watching it, and I. I just don't know. I feel like if you have, I don't, I don't know, if you have good memories of this movie, maybe you should revisit it. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen this movie, don't watch. You don't need to see this movie. I am completely on the level of like you could watch National Geographic and some car crashes, and you would get you would get there. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, with a glass yeah. of scotch and the neighbor's little tough. kid, ha you know, ha playing <laughs> Nintendo. It's a really tough one. It's a really tough one. But I, I've got to say, if you saw this when you were a kid, if you have a positive memory of it, I think you should revisit it. And I don't think it's a worthless movie. Certainly not, you know. But I do give it two and a half out of five. You know, it didn't knock my socks off by any stretch of the imagination. Like, like a few good lines and a, a you know, like a real tough kid. I I don't know. You know, like, and they're like, and some of that action really dragged. The fucking dogs in the cliff. Don't talk yourself out of this, Jeff. You're gonna say yes. <laughs> You're going to say yes <laughs> if someone remembers it from their childhood, okay? Otherwise, yeah, totally skip The Earthling. It's not a big deal. Watch Wake and Fright instead. There's really good movies out there. I but was there you, for that year. Yeah. I remember that movie. That that was Wake a, and Fright might need a trigger warning or two. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a tough movie, but it's great. Oh, and Oh, good. Yeah, and... Uh, <laughs> okay um, hey all right so i mean i i am gonna say yeah, yes i'm gonna ask you because i was just having this talk uh with the boys just uh -huh. yesterday i was talking uh -huh. we were talking about sequels mm -hmm. i mean i think this is a no-brainer just to, just like you know if you had to choose between watching the earthling and jaws the revenge jaws the revenge <laughs> 
shit. I never saw Jaws. I only saw the original Jaws. <laughs> oh the man, Jaws of Revenge is like an incredibly bad film. Like it's oh, it's, it's so amazing. Bad. It's amazing it how bad it is. <laughs> well, that's the thing, Jeremy. It might be better than if it's really bad, that might be less scary. Well, well, that's no, it the ain't thing. scary at all. <laughs> well, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's Every time the shark shows up, you laugh, and I will not yeah. tell you why, but See, there is a glaring when reason. Then I watch it. Because original sounds fun. Movie, I was yeah. little, and that was a scary movie. To me. I want to put myself on the record here. It's it's Jaws: The Revenge over the Earthling. <laughs> See, here's the thing: if a film is kind of <laughs> If a film is kind of midly, you know, that is a less memorable film than one that like truly shits all over the bed, you know. <laughs> on the That's true. That's and true. But we have now, a mixed that... review, though. We have it's like fifty-fifty. So still, that I think that kind of cool. Yeah. That we're yeah. Still we, lit. we have one more vote to go. We have one more vote to go. So I mean, I I have an inkling how this is going to go, but but please, Mick, tell us. Yes or no? Well, the purpose of this show, <laughs> uh, this movie as a child. Let's go back to our mission statement. And yeah, my mission statement. Mission statement. <laughs> yes, watch it again. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, <laughs> If you've never seen this movie, I, I'm going to say yes, you should watch it under the same circumstances that most everyone else did, which is, well, it's three in the afternoon on Saturday and there's nothing else on TV. <laughs> yes. Because back in yes. the day, you turned on HBO and you watched it. What which was is on exactly HBO. how I watched oh, the right. that we did. Hell yeah. <laughs> And you can take a nap, and it's not that big a deal. You can fall asleep. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Try to yeah, just like Lauda did. Yeah. You'll you'll know where you're at when you wake up. You'll be like, oh. <laughs> it's like falling asleep during baseball. You wake up and you're like, oh yeah, I know, where, I know what's going oh, on. That was a great game. That was a fantastic. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> good game. Good game. Loved it. Good no, game, I good game. seriously though, I did enjoy. I'm glad I watched it. Yeah. It's. It was an interesting watch, and I think I, I will remember it as, you know, like, maybe it is closer to three than two. But it's not what I'm going to bring out and go, hey, hey, come over tonight. We're going to watch yeah. it. Yeah. I, 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 think I, I think I give it out a three out of five. I've always been like a five-star scale guy uh, yeah. instead of the four. I, I give it a three out of five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I don't know right. kill my dog now. Yeah. Your dogs point, agree. Two, the dogs yeah. agree. Uh, dogs agree. I'm a 2.22. It's got to be below. Two, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 2.8. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Fractions. Wow. You guys yeah. get no, precise I, I'm, with I'm, it. Jeez. I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. <laughs> so many programs, Letterbox. I hope you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to die a slide dial. <laughs> you know, I don't want, yeah. Two danger noodles out of five. <laughs> two, two, nope ropes. two nope ropes out of five. Yeah, two nope ropes. I like that. I nope love ropes. that one. I That's like that one stuff. better than danger noodles. That's good stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there are some moments, you know, it's not a stupid movie, it's not a poorly put together movie. It's just log in the tooth and ham in the fist. I can't say it enough. It's log in the tooth. I think it's good. Like it, yeah. it's very you know, accurate. I, I I mean I I long in the tooth. I guess, but I I mean I didn't think it was that I ham it was fisted. Grim. I thought it was yeah. grim. Grim. Maybe. Yeah. Grim. It yeah. is grim. Yeah. But not. What what exactly does ham fisted mean? I oh, guess I need more context to that. It's just syrupy. You know, like in its melodrama. You know, like it's like, it's like that very. It's 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 like, uh, you know, uh, it's a wonderful life. That Hollywood version of like, you know, 
life affirming emotional punch. You know, hmm. it's it's hammy. You get it? You ball. get it? You see the point here? We're making the point. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank you for explaining what that means. <laughs> the, or you could just, or you, or you could have just said heavy handed because hams are heavy. <laughs> yeah, because hams are heavy. Yeah. Uh, that's true. Yeah, I right? need more. I need more experience with ham. Clearly, I have to ask. I need ham experience. Somebody get me a ham. That. <laughs> You need Next to get a whole Virginia ham. Pick up a ham. <laughs> I recommend a spiral ham. Yeah. Got it. Well, for eating. All right. Well, we've got Not another for allegory. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh dear God. Oh boy. He there agrees he goes. with everything. Yeah. She's trying to say that. Did y'all know that Monday was National Glazed Spiral Ham Day? Gosh, dang <laughs> what? <laughs> Why it's is true. he doing uh, like that? That's too rude. Too too. Is it Spiral Ham Day? <laughs> <laughs> it was. If you missed it, Dad. No. Oh, I'm sorry, no. too too. Where was it's my ham? ham. Ooh, <laughs> boy, the girl what does love a good it? ham. I don't. It's spiral hand day. <laughs> I got to I got to get well, a ham order in. Ham, I didn't go Yeah, I didn't order. take the time to fuck a single honey bait. What what happened? <laughs> what? <laughs> what happened? Hey, I will I will say though like, you know, it, 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 it never got kinky with the puppet in this movie. That's right. What are we talking There's about? No I don't sexual... even know what is happening now. There's no sexual it's over my ham fisty. <laughs> <laughs> that's the dirtiest breakfast I've ever heard of. What yeah. puppet? No, that's what he's saying. There was no puppet. There was no. There no was no puppet sexual, sexual yeah, tension. The, 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 like yeah. there was no alien. There is also yeah, no. There's puppet. no alien. Yeah. No alien. <laughs> you know, no puppet. This was a different movie for Total Recall. This was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, we broke new ground here. We broke new ground. I like it. I like it. We're getting, we're fanning out. We do have to talk about uh, our next episode in a couple weeks, and uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, the wizard picked rocket rule, and you know, we had uh, uh, streets of fire from gravy. Now, you know. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's time for uh, Bride of Pumpkinhead to choose. And we have talked about two very interesting titles recently that are part of... Uh... Yeah, uh, last time we were talking about um, Spaced Invaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the yeah. other one, Jeff? Well, it stars Rick Moranis. Oh. And it was your favorite comedy of all time. Yes, I did think Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was <gasps> comedic <laughs> genius. I mean, I thought that both of those movies were really funny. Um, yeah. I did watch Honey, I Shrunk the Kids like many, many times. Yes, Space definitely saw it a few times. Many times. Yeah. So I these have, are two. You're talking about two movies that are imprinted on your brain, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how are you feeling? Like, you know, like. What? <laughs> oh dear God. <laughs> That's oh, a break like? out the Thunderbird. <laughs> oh man. I, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> Well, I, I can my... tell you what, if we, if I, there's a very good chance that there will be um, sexual tension with the puppet in either of those films, you know, like <laughs> sexual tension, sexual, sorry, Paras are like the worst chant oh ever. Oh my God. No, oh, your dog agrees. That wasn't mine. No, soul agrees. No, nope, wasn't soul. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, she I don't have a me. dog. <laughs> <laughs> maybe she did drop her chewy on the floor. Maybe that sounded like a bark over the microphone or something. 
Like, Man, I, you know what? I think I could listen to James Mason read ingredients from cereal boxes. Oh, yeah? He's got a pretty amazing voice. He's got a pretty amazing voice. Yes. Well, I don't know. So which uh, like, one's it going to be? Yeah, I wouldn't know how to pick between those two. I would have yeah. a hard time. It's all up to Pumpkinhead. It's all, it's all up to Pride of Pumpkinhead. <laughs> <laughs> pride oh. of Pumpkinhead. <laughs> Did you just not pump- pick up on that? Oh, I didn't even notice. It's been her name the whole night. night. You big dummy. (laughs) I say, (laughs) I want you to know I say that to myself all the time. (laughs) Like, there's a red fox that lives in my head, and he's there to torment me anytime I make a mistake. (laughs) You big dummy. (laughs) Well, I was doing my best, and I maybe wasn't paying as much attention as I could have. All right, Pride of Bumpkin Head. Is it gonna be Space Invaders? Um, well, I guess, uh, oh gosh, this is really hard. It is hard. I guess yeah, maybe I feel like point, Space yeah. Invaders will be, yes, oh, man, but that whole oh, the, the opening yes. credits of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids are, is so good. <laughs> <laughs> There's this whole like you can't lose, you can't lose, you can't lose. Can't lose. They're both going to be great. They're both going to be great. <laughs> Do you want to ask the audience to choose? Yes, they yes. Have a few people watching. Ooh, that's a good idea. All right, All I, right I think I, let's t- type in our votes on the uh, on the comments or what? Yeah, everyone, everyone, everyone watching, everyone on the panel, please just type in which movie. Spaced Invaders or Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Let us know what you want. I'm excited. Everyone watching along. If you have a keyboard in front of you, let's see it. Yes. Yes, (laughs) (laughs) B-roll. Yes. That's my reaction to just about everything all the yeah. time. <laughs> First huh? of all, yeah. don't tell me what to do. Huh? I ain't typing shit. I'm just going to vote, honey, I shrunk the kids. But, but I don't oh, think... we got honey, I shrunk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh Excellent. my gosh, do we have a tie? Damn, you guys. Well, that can't be on. true. I'm We're still waiting for the wizard and Barbara, aren't we? No, the wizard says space invaders. We oh. have space invaders. Okay, I think it's it's space invaders. It's space invaders. invaders. Okay, thanks, thanks, you guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. Good gosh. I'm Man, sorry, Pumpkinhead. Now I feel terrible. One. Yeah, I feel bad. No, though. no, I'm excited. Like. I saw Space Invaders once and exactly once in the movie theater. I have never revisited it, and I did not hate it. So, you know, this is exciting for me, even I though I voted honey. Because I don't think I've ever seen it. Yeah, yeah I've never I don't seen think it. I've seen it either. Yeah. And, well, you know what is definitely in this movie is Aliens. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. We you all have puppies. We can scratch great, that great itch. Need. You are satisfying a great need right now. Yeah. So thank you. You know that William Friedkin's the uh, William Friedkin's Sorcerer was in the theater at the same time as Star Wars. So imagine just like on a whim going to the theater to see Star Wars, and being like, "Oh, it's sold out." Well, I you know kind of got chubs for a fantasy. Let's go see Sorcerer. <laughs> and halfway through the movie, you're like. I don't think there's any goddamn magic in this movie at all. <laughs> what, what the fuck? What the fuck? But well, isn't it a great movie, though? Isn't it the Sorcerer? It, no, like, it's cool? an incredible movie. Like, Sorcerer is maybe, like, I mean, it's a tough one. Probably still The Exorcist. But, man, is the Sorcerer my second favorite freaking holy crap. <laughs> You know, awesome. like it is so good. So good. 
But not one wizard. Not one wizard. <laughs> no fucking magic. Weird. But you know what? I think there are Australians in uh, Space Invaders, if I'm not mistaken. Great. Australia. Let's link them all up. Everything yeah, my favorite know. Australian Big, movie giant circle. has... has <laughs> in it. What is it? Oh, is it uh, Stunt Rock? It's fucking Stunt Rock. Yeah, I guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a death wish at 102 decibels. <laughs> and it has wizards in it. it has Damn, two, I gotta see this. Two you have not seen Stunt Rock, you gotta watch Stunt Rock. Stunt Rock all day, Jeremy. Get it. Get is it on your... Uh, 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 is it um uh well you know can I yeah, watch I it? Yeah, I don't think it is because I have it on DVD, but I'll fix that. Sweet, I will fix that for sure, and and I will watch it with you. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> um, I don't know if you guys noticed my T-shirt, but I wore it for uh, <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> Earthling Earth Day. So happy Earth Day, Earthlings. Which I just happened to learn we all are. There's nothing special about that at all. In fact, unless you're, in fact, unless Earthling, you're the Earthling. Earthling only means that you're like an Earth specific worldling. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> All right, Spaced Invaders it is. And before we go, what are some things? And I, if I'm not mistaken, it's only me and Pride of Bumpkinhead that have seen this movie, right? All of the panelists? I've, I've never seen it. Do you I'm remember it? Sure I have never seen it. Do you remember it? Remember commercials or anything? Nope. Not a damn no. thing. Not a damn thing. Okay, I do remember the VHS cover. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's it. Yeah. Well, okay. Um, what do you remember about it? <laughs> Pride of Bumpkinhead? What like give us a tease? I remember watching it with my cousins on mm -hmm. sleepovers and we just laughed and laughed and thought it was so funny and quoted it all the time to each other. Do you remember any quotes? One, uh, so the spaced invaders are like screwing around and their big boss guy, like what they're mouthing off to their boss guy and he shoots one of them and the other two look over and they're like, well, I'm in. And the other one's like, me too. No problem. And we just, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we were kids. So that was just really hysterical. Oh, man. This is going to be great. <laughs> yeah, right. it's okay. <laughs> he shoots him dead? Or the, or the character he shoots is still in the movie? Um, I feel like you may have shot him dead. But now oh I'm saying God. that, that seems kind Which of Which is why the other two are like, I'm in. Maybe I mean maybe he just like zapped him, um, yeah. but we'll we'll find out. Yeah. And then we, there was one of the other Martians or space links that um, I guess we thought that they, he he had like he was doing like a Jack Nicholson, and we just were so delighted that a Martian, a, a space alien, would have that voice. That really rings a bell. Yes. yes. One of the Martians speaks Jack Nicholson the whole time, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I remember that. Yeah. I really remember very, very little about this movie. This vague idea that I enjoyed watching it. And that's about it. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 psyched. I sounds did. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Well, um, I think that's it. Uh, anyone who grew up with the Earthling, 
we have a very middling suggestion that you revisit it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if very there's small. A, yeah, if there's a picture that we can go out on, you know, um, I think it's this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man they wrecked the shit but, out of that camper yeah. buttercup i want to thank you for suggesting this movie i yeah. i yeah. i, I'm I glad do i do appreciate seeing it yeah, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and uh you know thanks to everyone who uh chatted along with us while we talked about this movie tonight and i want to thank everyone who's going to watch this stream later on uh and you know who knows maybe even like check out this movie try and find out who the heck that aborigine actor is you know but we really appreciate everyone hanging out with us i had a wonderful time discussing this and uh if Unless anyone else has any other like closing thoughts, we'll uh, we'll just go ahead and and say good night. And good there night. we are. We're gonna go ahead and say good night. <laughs> good night. All right. Good, good night, night everyone. Hasta bye bye. Yeah. Take care. Talk. Good night. Me, 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 me